What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Ed Piscor Portrait Fundraiser Edition. What is going on behind me? Oh, okay, it's some. I got X Men to the Clone Wars playing behind me. I was like, "What is what is going on?" Hey, what's up, everybody? We're back. Uh, I'm going to try and wrap this up here. Um, this is the portrait of Ed Piscor to commemorate commemorate to uh, memorialize his passing. Um, I am au currently auctioning this right now on eBay. Uh, you can see the tally up there. We got up to 99 bucks. Um, all the funds are going to go to his family. I'm going to just send it right to their, their GoFundMe. And um, I'll make sure I put the Ed Piscor Portrait Fundraiser Edition in the comments or whatever. So we all know that's where I went to. But uh, that's what we're going to do. So if you're thinking about helping out his family, you could pitch in here and get a piece of artwork out of it as well. Right? Um and to help support them, and then uh, I will, you know, whatever whatever I can do to help, right? That's basically what we're trying to do here is be helpful. So, um, so far, so good. It's working. It is working bit by bit. We're getting there. Um, chats are open. If you want to talk about Cartoonist Cafe, you want to talk about X-Men, whatever you want to talk about, we'll talk about. I'm going to be here. It's uh, going to work on this. <laughs> this is, uh, I got my boba. We're good there. A lot of what's left is like black colors, right? Dark black colors. And those are a little tricky to do because you can't just use black. Otherwise, it'd be a wall of nonsense. So it's a combination of purples and pinks and reds and blues with indigos. And um, then black thrown in on top. So it's always tricky to like. Okay, this will have more of a purple blue, that more of a brown blue, that more of a, a brown tint, a blue tint, a purple tint, a red tint to the darks. Ed seemed to wear a lot of black, so I was like, well, why change that? Definitely want to work on my gouache painting this year so I can wash and acrylic wash actually so I can start to paint portraits, you know. I'm going to start that with this one. Um, whoa!
What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining in. I am currently working on this EDP portrait that we are auctioning off. That's right there. We got 99 bucks for that sucker, top right. So, discordtribute.com. We'll take it right to the eBay page. It's on eBay. Um, I just got a URL forwarded over there. So, if you guys want to bid on it, all that money is going to go to Ed Piscor's family's GoFundMe to help cover their legal fees, funeral costs, all that stuff. All that stuff. Need some pink in there. Need some pink. <sighs> Trying to add some energy into these headphones so it's not just a rendering, you know. Well, energy, what's up, Psycho? Psycho over on the Twitchers says hello. Says, Welcome back, thank you. Had to go get my car picked up from, from the old mechanic. It's all good. No major issues, so regular maintenance. Good to go. Get the shadows all dropped in here.
Timmy, what's up? Timmy. What's up, Timmy? This is going to be a little bit of a trick to get a black hoodie done and also keep the lines. That's why you never use full black until you have to because it still gives you room value wise. You just start out with 100% black, then you got nowhere else to go. So I do a lot of this darker stuff with the indigo blue. You know, like you can plan for it. I made a color guy before I started. And you can plan, but it's really just an idea. It literally is just a guide or an idea. Because once it's on the board and you start looking at the way colors move and the way it's turning out, you have to adjust to the actual piece. You know? At some point, you stop even looking. You're just looking at the piece you're making. Like, I'll double check just to see if I'm on target with what I had planned on doing, but at this point, I'm adjusting the colors based on what's on the board and what's working for the actual piece. Nice. 
actually gonna use this for I'm actually gonna have to make that yellow. That's the only thing that makes sense. To make that white, I'll make yellow. Because I'm going to have to make his cord a light blue. And I'm just gonna compete kind of like two of the same ones. Put that in there. Look at that no more. Actually, a violet, so I'm brown. Brownish to rub. Building up texture, with color. Using color, texture. Color as an emotion. We're not using color as a way to render things exactly as they exist in life, as if it were a photograph. We're not doing it. We don't do that. Take a photo. We need to feel color, not observe it.
If there's anything else that I'm going to take and incorporate it in my life based on Ed Piscor and the life he led is a healthy reminder to pursue my more artistic endeavors of creating with comics. You know, like I love working on Spawn and I'll work on that as long as they want me to. Because that was a childhood dream of mine. I love it. But when they no longer want me to do that, I'm doing my own. I'm, I'm not, you know. Maybe if it was like, you know, Turtles. You know, maybe if it was like Asriel at DC, like something like that, I could get into. But otherwise, I'm doing my own thing. You know. That was always my goal when I first started. I just didn't think I was indie enough, artistic enough to do indie stuff, and I didn't think I was commercial good enough to do commercial comics. So, you know, after like a bunch of failed, not on my part, but I worked on a bunch of comics that just didn't get published, and I just was unhappy with the way all that stuff turned out. I just gave up on it. But I know all Ed wanted to do was make comics. Best thing I can do is honor that sort of that legacy, you know, by doing them myself, right? And making them the way I want to make them. However, that looks whether it's digital, traditional, they'll always be artistic. Always be artistic. Never just cranking out things that are like, oh, we're just doing it because that's the way the comic's supposed to look. Not doing that. Not doing that at all. At all. You know, it's funny, I used to make a bunch of videos showing how you can use markers and then use color pencil to blend and kind of build up on top of the marker. Now I'm doing it backwards. I'm doing the color pencil and then using the marker to fill in the gaps, saturate color, and run back to the color pencil for texture. And...
down a shade. Just to come down a shade. Dark. Dark. I haven't gotten full black yet. Maybe you can build up a lot of a lot of color layers and stuff. And this video doesn't do it any justice, but when you look at it up close, you're like, oh shit, like you can just kinda of look into it. Kind of stare into the scribbles. Stare into the scribbles. Cable. Just do this.
What's up, Cosby? How you doing? Very rad. Thank you. It is actually. You know my initial spell ran? Robert Allen Duaney. <laughs> I used to sign my heart rad, but people just didn't. It didn't pick up, so we switched to Sketchcraft. So, but thank you. I appreciate that. What the hell was I doing? Oh, yeah, I was doing this. As I said, it gives off an old school Scotty Young vibe, but better. And I've been told that um, Scotty actually bought some colored pencils off me last year, dude. He's a super nice guy. Um, I I am a fan of Scotty's work, but I I can't say uh, I ever sat with his art open. I think Scotty and I have similar interests. Especially when you think old school, Scotty. I think we were both looking at Carlos Maglia back in the early night, late nineties, early two thousands. You don't know who Carlos Maglia is? He's sort of the guy that inspired definitely Herberto Ramos. I mean, I think they even knew one another. Carlos Maglia was an illustrator that goes back as far as nineteen seventy eight. He worked at Disney. He worked at everywhere. And, uh, definitely like of that mindset like when i saw carlos stuff i was like that's how i think you know so and we kind of have that foundational i think we have that foundational i think john some of you some of some of aria some of aria red jay i think he he too because i did a whole like couple videos on the history of like uh not really history but i look back at carlos maglia when he did a series called Inari. So those videos are up on the YouTube channel. Um, but, um, and then I know he was like, man, thanks for bringing up Car Carlos McGlue is great, you know? So I think he's in that category. Cossack says, not saying you're biting or anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know you're not. Yeah, we're definitely in that, that category, right? I think, I think that's a fair, that's a fair call. Cartooning, but with details, right? Cartooning, but with detail. Detailed cartooning. Yeah. I think Scotty's stuff now is definitely like, it's got that, I, I call it the Tim Burton vibe. Like, if you ever see like Tim Burton's like uh, drawings and stuff, like he takes that to like another level, dude. And it's super dope. Um, I can't do shit with the brush, man. <laughs> like, he's, he, he sent me a note. He was like, hey, man, your color pencils are, oh, they're so amazing. I'm like, man, I, I feel that way about your, uh, your brush work, man. I can't do, can't do black and white brush, dude. I tried it. Just, I can't feel, can't feel it. Um, nah, nah, nah. But I, I just, I think that, that foundation i definitely i've never asked I, if i did i'd ever i'd love to ask if he ever paid attention to carlos maglia i'm just interested you know definitely bill watterson like when i work digitally my ink style is closer to bill watterson so um i'm drawing a spawn series that comes out this summer called spawn kills every spawn and it definitely has that old school Scotty vibe with Mc Carlos Maglia, Bill Watterson. So if you're definitely into that, um, it's, there's not going to be a Spawn book that looks like it. Even though there's like a hundred Spawn books coming out this year. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. Um, good time, buddy. Uh, it's going to be totally awesome. Super fun. And I put an Ed Piscor and Jim Rugg comments kayfabe, cartoonist kayfabe, Easter egg in the first issue. Uh, I drew it last summer, so it's in there. Casa says, yeah, he started leaning into like the Ben Temple Smith multimedia, but kept the card. Yeah, 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 dude. Everyone sort of changes. I mean, like when I, I started out in comics in 2005 and I was doing this like Treasure Island, a Treasure Planet sort of Disney bit. 
uh, sold a book to Image called Mosaic doing that. And then uh, my writer disappeared on me. So I got a gig, uh, indie studio drawing a book called Monstroids. And I ended up drawing that closer to like a 90s uh, Turtles meets G.I. Joe monster thing, you know? And um, then that didn't get published. And then I ended up getting into cover arts back in early 2000, 2010, 2011. And I just was like, well, I'll do like uh, the more Top Cow. What do you call that? It's not Top Cow, but more of that sort of J. Scott Campbell, you know, Capullo thing. I can show you like, like I drew and colored these, right? And you can see like totally different, right? Like it's definitely like more of that image extreme studios kind of like vibe. I'm not taking them out the plastic, so I have to deal with that. But um, this isn't actually how I naturally draw. These little cartoon characters are like how I draw. So I gave up on that after a few years. And uh, now I just do my own my own way, you know. Kostic says, "Where am I? What, was I part of the lead heavy? I was definitely part of the lead heavy era. So I was on Shane Glein sketchboard sessions at that time, around 2002, 2003, when Scotty and them were on there, and then Scotty." And those guys formed Lead Heavy, right? The original crew was what Scotty, uh, John Boy, um, who else was on that? Sean Galloway was on that. Uh, who else was in there? <laughs> I remember those three being the top in that group, right? Was was Lashawn part of Lead? I don't think Lashawn was part of Lead Heavy, but yeah, that sort of like came out of the sketchboard sessions era and so oh thank you thank you yeah but like i don't do that anymore so i got fans who knew me from that stuff and now like why don't you go back to that and i'm like because i hate doing it <laughs> that is that is not how i draw like that was a pain in the ass for me so you know i feel like every now and then you go through this thing where you, you go in a direction, you know, and hopefully it's for the better artistically, but you definitely, you definitely risk losing folks like your audience when you do that. All right. People who are like, I like the other way better. I don't see myself changing too much though. Like I could see myself doing something in the art style that was animated, like, um, something closer to like treasure or Atlantis or treasure, you know, like, you know, Atlantis or Epper's New Groove or doing something like that, but I could never see myself going back to doing, like, the Jim Lee-ish, Mark Silvestri, J. Scott Campbell. Look, you know, like, um, as much as I love that stuff, it's just not, not, not how I think. That's the same here. I was always posting art up in there. Hell yeah, dude. Hey, man, well, thank you for fucking showing up, dude. Skate... Shout out to Saint Shane Glein Sessions, Sketchboard Sessions, man. That was that was before DeviantArt. There was Shane Glein Sketchboard Sessions. That's where all the artists were posting. Pros, fans. I mean, um, I was uh, I posted some turtles art there at the time, and Scott Cohen was drawing the turtles book for Peter Laird, the Peter Laird one, and he was like, I do these like really big turtles. I don't know how to describe. You ever see the cartoon El Cid? Like. Coincidentally, that came out while I was doing it, so it was like the same kind of look. So I just go, it was like El Cid Turtles, if you can imagine that. And um, Scott was like, you want to do like a backup story in Turtles? I'm like, hell yeah. And Peter Lair was like, hell no. <laughs> He's like, your turtles are too big, man. And I, I, at the time, I didn't think, well, I could just draw differently. I was like, oh, I guess I'm not, guess I'm not doing that now. I should have just pivoted. Yeah, I was trying to get a comic up off the ground at the time called Yam, which is sort of like my... It's kind of like a samurai-looking character. It looks kind of like a samurai marshmallow. Um, but no words. Silent comics. But there was no publishers for that, and I didn't even... I wasn't even aware of what Fantagraphics was at the time. I should have gone there. 
um, I just gave up. <laughs> you know. Fanta graphics was not on my radar. Actually, until Ed Piscor, really. I really love their reproductions of like the Scrooge McDuck stuff they do and the Carl Barks. But they do a lot of really great original comics too, man. A lot of it's autobiographical, which I don't my life's not that interesting, you know? Like I have interesting career experiences, but nothing I think I could sit around and spend my days drawing. But if I ever do a comic in color pencil, that's where I would take it. But I can assure you, Spawn kills every Spawn. Let me tell you, the first issue is very, like, I want to say in the vein of Fairyland and Bill Watterson. Like, somewhere around there. Issue two, it gets more, it gets, it gets more old school Scotty image comics-y. Issue three and four, it's some of the craziest shit I've ever drawn. <laughs> That's all I can say. So many details, and yet still maintains that cartoony edge, you know? So, first issue is going to ship this July, and um, I'm going to stream the ink. So I've already drawn it digitally, but I've been printing out the pages to do my inks for traditional for my sake. And um, I've already did the covers. I can't show you covers two and three, but I can show you the cover to issue one. Uh, I will be streaming future pages as they get released, but this is the traditional line arts for that. You know? So, um, balls to the wall, cartoony action with tons of details, right? So. But I, I insisted, like, when the spawns show up, that I draw them in a more serious cartoony style, you know, not like a caricature. Costa says, yeah, I was doing a book called Howling of the Djinn, but more like Scud style writing and art, but had a loose plot and couldn't focus on. Ah, oh, man. Love, love Scud. Did you see the Scud piece I did recently? It was super fun, man. Um, I streamed it. It's in the live section if you want to see. But that's dope, dude. Howling of the Jinn. Good name, too. You had a... Uh, couldn't focus enough to write. Right. Yeah, that's too... I always say, man, you're better off just writing everything out, like, in, in, in one-page plots, you know? Like, just... Matter of fact, just make a list of what you want to happen, like, in order. And then just draw that. And then add the words to Marvel style. Like, just do the Marvel style on your own dude if you can't this way you don't have to win an award on writing you just have to get the book done you know and um like like i always recommend artists just just do that just plot out just write out a list of what you want to draw and then when you when you're looking at that then figure out the pages you know visually make it work without any words and then go and add words you know like this way, if if uh, the words aren't that great, once you get it published, they can rewrite the words. <laughs> you know, you can always get, you can always put some money into hiring someone to rewrite the words, dude. It's not a big deal. You know, but if it works without the words, then it works, you know?
like um sometimes i'll do things like here let's see if i can show you let's see if i have this example right here is this does this have it does this have like i was doing some stuff where i just play video games right and like i draw out like what it's like to play the game right like like you know when you select a level and then there's these dialog boxes and then you type in your name and stuff like this is the kind of stuff I'm gonna do with my own comics and stuff, you know? Totally different. I, I've tried to pitch these layouts to Todd and other publishers. They just look at me like I'm fucking nuts. So this is what's going into my own comics moving in the future, you know? But, um, you know, then you can work out the words after the fact, you know? You don't have to, you know. I've drawn Marvel style plot scripts and I've drawn full scripts from screenwriters and um, I just think artists would do better by just making a checklist of shit to do and then making it work visually. Yeah, yeah, RPG style. That's that's the kind of stuff I'm going to do, you know, like when I'm done with Spawn. So like I just I put it off for a while, but then when Ed passed, I was like, I can't you know, I'm not getting any younger. And so I'm going to, I'm going to do my own stuff. I'm just going to do it my way. And if it doesn't make sense to anyone, then it doesn't make sense. You know, that's fine. But I'm going to, I'm going to do it because I always wanted to see this stuff, you know, in print. So that's it. That's what we're going to do. And I'll do a color pencil mixed media variant cover for all the covers, right? I'll have digital and then this stuff. Of course, I'll have to come up with like a different color scheme. So I'm not doing the same color scheme twice, but that's fine. Now we can add some black to these lines just to push it a little further. Okay. Hey, thanks, Cossack, man. Thank you. When it comes time to do my own comics, we will be streaming me working on that here for certain. And then with the spawn stuff, we don't have a promo code up yet, or a, I'm sorry, promo, a um, pre-order code yet. But when the pre-order code comes, I'm going to start inking the pages that have, they've already shown, you know. So there'll be more of that to see here. So that's how I plan on promoting the book. You know, because you just can never tell if it'll get enough promotion. So. I want to do a graphic novel or a single for my own. Um, what I'm probably going to do is the first one I'll do a 20 page, right? Something full color myself. I'll color it. Um, um, we'll do a, I'll do a one shot 20 page. And then if it works out, I'll then move to a 40 page and then we'll see if we can get up to. I got so many ideas I can do a 20 page one shotter, you know? So uh, we'll definitely start small and build up, you know, for certain. I could do it where I do the first 20 pages as a book. And then if I get a publisher, I can continue that story. Maybe another, they tend to like in comics, they want 60 pages or three issues, 20 pages, or they want a 90 page to a hundred page, a hundred page graphic novel. So, you know, I personally would feel better just doing the 20 pages on my own and then getting a publisher to do the remaining four issues, you know? I think that would be the smarter way. But, um, yeah. 
Classic says, do I know Derek Hunter, the Pirate Club guy? Never heard. Never heard of Derek Hunter, the Pirate Club guy. Is that a person or a book? says his pirate club was his book he was shopping around super good never got picked up oh that's a shame all self-published dude for real i already i've done several kickstarters like for prints and, and and other stuff so like i can do that you know um but i think if i wanted to exp the problem though here's the problem expanding it out to 80 pages with the publisher basically i gotta sign a deal where like they work with my schedule because I am not going to kill myself drawing a book. Like, I'll take a year. It's fine. You know, maybe a year and a half if I'm, since I'm coloring it. Um, but I can't see a situation where uh, I go, oh, yeah, you'll have this all in blah, 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 blah. And then I kill myself to do it. <laughs> That's my one thing, you know. And if they say, hey, come back to us when it's done, then that that's something I could do, too, you know, but we'll see. I think I think 20 pages, you know, one shot completes, maybe, maybe 32, because what's a 12? Well, 20, let's say 20, let's say 20 page, 20 page plus making of, right? That gets us to a 40 page book. I double it with supplementals, with the sketches and the making ofs and stuff, you know, that 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 could be something I could to get myself on something that's manageable the biggest problem with indie comics man is just they go too big you know and then nothing ever gets finishes or you get burnt out How's this things? But he went on to do pretty violent and Walking Dead small bites and other great stuff. But yeah, I hope he'll go back to Yeah, man. I'll look it up, dude. I really will. Derek Hunter, the Pirate Club guy. Thank you for bringing that up. I will definitely check it out. See, that's the thing. Like, I grew up going to San Diego Comic Con, right? An artist alley at Comic Con wasn't what it is today. Today it's all prints. It's like all everyone has like a fucking wall of prints size of the freaking Empire State Building, and I find it to be disgusting. It's, I don't care about fan art. I, that's fine. It's just there used to be, like, control, right? You had a very limited... If, if everyone was doing prints, but they had... Everyone gets six feet behind them, and that's it, like a, a banner, and you get a table with your stuff, I'd be fine with it. But it's the swap meet thing I can't stand because everyone's now bringing 300 prints. It's crazy. But back in the 90s, it was about showing off your new book, like your thing, you know? And so I used to go to Comic-Con every year to find the new thing, you know, like something I can't get anywhere else. And like one of the books I got, I always keep right here because it was a funny book. It hasn't aged that well, but it, it's definitely still cool. Where is it? Of course, I, I can't find it. Here we go. What? Not right. Oh, here it is. The PO'd postal worker, right? Like this kind of shit. Crazy, right? Like 
This is probably like right in that vein with uh what do you call it? Um Johnny the Homicidal Maniac, you know, th these kinds of books, you know? And this stuff is what I used to live for at cons, you know? And that went away. I mean, Owly was a book I picked up when it first came out. Owly was great, you know? Um, Hero Bear and the Kid. Uh, Girl Scouts for Ma Food. Do you remember Girl Scouts? Uh, Coffin. Man, I, I miss old school Oni. Oni Press, dude. Black and white Oni Press. That was my jam. That was my jam. John, yeah, Squee, Johnny the Hobbit, Maniac, Squee, and then Filler Bunny, which <laughs> Filler Bunny is, Filler Bunny's the shit. Filler Bunny's my jam. But there was a great book um, uh, Bendis did called Torso. You ever read Torso? That shit was awesome. It's weird, I'm a color guy, but... I love those indie black and white books, you know? Ashley Wood and his stuff. Yeah, yeah, Ashley Wood, dude. I love his spawn work, you know? I did a Vader, Darth Vader sketch cover. Like, it was a commission. It wasn't official. But it kind of did it in an Ashley Wood-ish style, you know, using markers. It's all my DeviantArt if you want to see that. But yeah, that... Hotbot, his Metal Gear stuff was dope. But the Spawn stuff is what I really like. That needs a little work. A little work. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you followed Uncle Jerk, right? Jerk Comics, Roman, Roman's channel. He did a really great interview with Rob Schraub. It was like two hours long. If you're in a scud, dude, like, I always recommend that one. That was, that was a dope interview. Roman's a good dude. Where did I put my green? 
Oh, I know. I put it back in, back in the compiler pencil holder. Of course, of course. Let's do the people. Uh, this is very cool. I'll check back uh, later. Uh, well, thank you, Kyle. Don't be a stranger. Follow me on socials. Keep in touch, man. Say hi. For real, dude. Anyone that remembers Shane Glein sketchboard sessions, it's always welcome here. Super appreciate it. And lead heavy, right? Lead heavy days. Those Josh Middleton drawing runaways days. <laughs> Those Carrie Andrews drawing X Men Unlimited issue 37 days. <laughs> the Scotty Young drawing the Human Torch days. Spider Clan is my shit. You know, no, okay. Folks, I want you to know right now. The only thing that could ever convince me to like kill myself to work with Marvel would be on a Spider Clan book. I am a legend of the Spider Clan mark. Period. <laughs> that is my jam. Full stop. We want to talk about biting off Scotty Young, though. I did do a Scotty Young homage. I did this um, Turtles cover for a video game magazine called Mega Visions last year. And uh, I drew uh, the turtle van in the background going up the hill in a Scotty Young style. That's the one he bought. He, I did a color pencil version of it. He bought that one. So I sold Scotty his own shit back. He's <laughs> an incredibly nice guy. Incredibly nice guy. But I did do. Technically, it's like a Bachalo thing. I think I think that's kind of like where I first noticed that that look, that Bachalo, you know. But it was definitely in the, that vein. There's a scene in Spawn Kills Every Spawn, issue three. I'm not going to spoil it, but there's a scene where I redrew a couple panels from Spawn issue one into a scene. Like, not the same characters, different characters, but the same idea. And it was like, I just paid Todd. Todd paid me. I just, <laughs> he just gave me money and I gave him back his own comic. Like, it's hilarious. But it's a good homage, actually. Like, if. If you know what you're looking at, you'll appreciate it. But most people won't. That's when you know you've done a good homage when people are like, the fans will get it. You know, it's really just for the fans. You in a little Joe Matt? Yeah, well, again, that's all. That's my Capcom Bangus stuff, dude. We all grew up with Bangus, right? For me, it was uh, the game fan published the Darksiders strategy guide. And in the back of that strategy guide was um, all the Darksiders concept art that Bangus did. You know, like Ed McGinnis, Ed McGinnis had to have had that's the Capcom books and all that stuff, too. Right. 
This is where we can build up texture, folks. You know, and the children of the atom, right? Like, I'm a children of the atom Capcom guy. Super Street Fighter, Street Fighter Alpha. Oh. After Alpha 3, it's all downhill for me. <laughs> I don't like 3D Street Fighter. Although, and I'm going to get hate for this, but it's all right. I actually kind of enjoyed the Street Fighter Alpha Plus series on the PlayStation 1. They were blocky and slow, but the jazz vibe I was digging. Not a great game, but a solid fun time. The better series was Rival Schools. Full stop. But I did enjoy the Alpha Alpha Plus games. All right, let's get. He's done. Yeah, rival schools all day, dude. Yeah. Wish that series would come back. They should hand uh they should hand off their 2D style fighters. I mean I know it was a 3D game, dude, but it was animated and shot in a you know, blocked in a very 2D fashion. But they should hand that stuff off to Arc System Works. Love to see Arc System Works do a rival schools or dark stalkers. That would be dope. It's not just nostalgia speaking. I love Arc System Works. I mean, even their Grand Blue game is freaking awesome. You know, I just think Arc System Works is the closest to old school Capcom being made now. All right, I'm going to do these marker so much. I need stuff to get through. And color pencil is not so great for tiny little. We'll throw a color pencil on top, but for now we're just. Ah, 
Oh no, I hate when I do that. I mix the, the tops. It's never, it's never a good sign. I'll tell you what a dream project would be a licensed dream project to do some books that adapt those games not just not just dark soccer's or rival schools but adapt even like the Konami Turtles games I'd love to do stuff like that but drawing them in very unique ways that make you feel like you played the game rather than read a comic The stick says, yeah, Darkstalkers had the best style hands down. I always wish they would have went a little further, like mix. Yeah, I would love, dude, if they could get Joe Mad, if Arc System Works could do it and then get Joe Mad to do designs and shit and then push that way further, that would be my, my jam. That'd be game of the century for Rob. Yeah, I mean, if you look at like the animations in Blast Blue and Guilty Gear, I mean, those are the guys to do it. Those are the guys to do it. Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Buddy, paper color in here. For a little bit of whatever the fuck this is in here, because I think it'll do. That is.
go ahead and just get
And he says, this is coming along fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's getting there. Can't say I didn't put my best foot forward. <laughs> you know? Not a ton left to do, it's mostly just color, line quality, and I got some pots because I want to throw on top of some of this stuff back here. Um, yeah. to pull the tape off. Thank you. Where's my Pasca? Where is it? Maybe that. Careful. <laughs> Shit. You gotta get like three of them at a time. So you're not doing this three times at once, right? Again and 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 again. again. This, this looks better. It's a little distorted right now, folks, because of the camera. Like, like, camera kind of distorts a little bit. So he's, it's a, his head's a little bigger. It's, a, it's at an angle. Let's see if I, I don't think there's any, only so much I can do, you know? Only so much I can do, folks. Just back a little bit. Move these over here. Green. So. too much down once it dries you can just kind of go over it with pencil or marker or something even scrape it off half the time not a big deal
need to think if I want to do something or not. I need to think. I don't know where I put it. Hmm. Well, it's certainly not in there. No. I'm fine. Just saw this sucker three days ago. <laughs> it's always eluding. I have a black Posca and it just disappears on me. It just disappears on Rob. I got the big fatty one, but I don't have the one I actually like using. Doesn't help. Not having the one you want does not help. I don't like the big fat. I do. You're good at I'm gone. And that's not dark enough. Boy, I don't want to pull out the brush. <laughs> Boy, I don't want to pull out the brush. It would not be fun. I can, I can do that. It would not be. Sit in one of these drawers. I put it in one of these drawers and then get about it. Let's see. There's not a lot of space in here. We're in a tiny studio, so. Nothing out in here. Uh, 
Oh well. So, how archivable that stuff is. So, let's not risk it. Well, they have to get the brush. I don't want to do that. Hmm. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to find. I'm going to find it the minute I'm done with the stream. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> I know how this works. I know how this works. Worker bin. Why oh, bin? See, it may have been in here. This is the only place left. Drop that, Rob. I'm holding this in a really weird way. I'm going to drop it. Don't drop it. Not in. He's not in here. They go get my brush. brush yes does rattle blank use in brush no but i need something super black pasta or where way to go where's the pasta maybe we'll grab my brush Not just this ink, um, I'm considering whether I want to do a pastel texture bit on top here, something scribbly, something loose, a soft pastel. And I don't know, I don't know yet. I have not decided, like I'm thinking about it, The thing that's holding me back on it is I don't want to cover up the words. So, like, I pulled the words into, so they're there, but they're not in your face, but I, I risk covering up the words. Nielsen's looks fab, Rob. Oh, thanks, Timmy. Really appreciate it. Trying to make something Ed would have appreciated, right? part about doing all those color pencils when I do throw some scribbly ink on top I can see it like it still pops forward 
What's the benefit to not just going with ink to start off with or going with black to start off with? Create levels of black. Yeah, I won't lie, it's a little tricky though because the glare. To kind of like duck around. I can't use a brush pen, but I can use a sable. I can feel it. I can't feel a brush pen. I really wish I could. I can't feel it. Touch the paper. Oh, it's went on.
So, do I do? Do I do that? I do that. I know what to do. I know what to do. Let's do a test. Because there's always a practice piece. So. Let's see if this works. What I want to do. So, I really need my airbrush to cooperate. That is not cooperate. Whoa! Come on, buddy. Come here. Come here. Come here, you little bastard. It's all tangled up. Yep. Um, can't turn it. Fine. And unplug it. You know what, folks? I don't think I'm going to be able to. See, I had a USB powered airbrush, it just died on me. And so I have to go back to my regular powered airbrush. Alright. <sighs> it's always something, folks. Always something. Unless I buy a new house, I am not getting a bigger studio. So, what I got to work with. It's tiny, but by Japanese standards, it's giant. So. <laughs> well, that's just way too much clear gesso, Rob. That up. Yes. So, what I'm going to do is dilute and clear gesso with water. Air brushable. A little too dilute. And I'm going to see. On this test piece, if I mean it's not the same bit, but it'll give me enough. Once I start messing with it, I'll know if it's something I want to do today or not. Some days I got the touch, some days I don't. It's not coming through. It's always because I'm doing it live. See, when I do this on my own, no problems. But the minute I'm doing it live, it's like, no, we don't want. Come on. I clean this out, so it's not. I'm getting errors. It's not getting. Oh, liquid enough. Oh, okay. 
what is happening? Let's pour this out first. Maybe there's it's plugged up on me. It shouldn't. No, it's not. I'm getting air, but no liquid. Let's just pour water in and see if water falls through. Oh uh, no, there's something blocked in there. That's not good. May not get to do what I want to do. Let's see if air's coming through. I wouldn't want the liquid coming through. I know why. Because it hates me. Here. Well, I mean, I get to do it. Boy, I don't want to have to buy another airbrush. I've never had air come through, but not the liquid. It's a new one for Rob. Normally if it's clogged up, nothing comes through. Which means it's gotta be clogged up at the source, right? Where it's meeting up. Means. Which is so weird. And I really like my other airbrush too, the USB one. But like I said, it just stopped working. Like it won't even turn off. The light turns on, but the compressor won't. There we go. Oh look, I'm gonna give this a couple more minutes and if it doesn't... If it doesn't start going through them. Wait! The other one worked flawlessly for three years, and then just dead. Yeah, that's... I don't know what that is. Well, that's just, uh, that's a shame. That is a shame. Not even a drop's coming out, just air.
All right, well, that ain't happening. Because if I can't airbrush the gesso, then it's not going to work anyway. So, I'm going to have to get a new airbrush, which sucks. Yeah, well, I guess that's going to be it then. Let me think if I can think of anything else. Keeps texting. Stop texting. Stop texting. All right. Hmm. Let me see if my... Maybe maybe the the other one's working. No, it's not. Let's see. Do I have the USB cable here? Yeah. See, it lights up, right? Like. When I plug it in, but uh, I don't know, it's not lighting up. Can I unplug it? No, oh, that's in there. Lit up, but no dice. They said these things can randomly die. Quite the shame. Because it worked great. Right. For what I was using it for, but there's no way to like take these apart. Oh well, I guess I guess that's that. Something to add to the list. When my next spawn check comes in, I'll have to get a new airbrush. All right. For those who stuck with it, let's do the... Let's let's sign this sucker. And then we'll do the untaping. How about that? Find it. That's that. Now let's let's uh, take the back part. I'll, I'll get that on camera. Just gotta get these backs wrapped it around the board so it would stay. Give me a second. Zoom out. Okay, that's gonna be the easy part. So let's get this side. And take this off the back. Quite the bummer on the airbrush, but now I don't have to worry about whether it'll work. I know it'll work. not 
the big untaping. This is like extra taping. Get the other big side, and then we'll do we'll do the part, the fun part. Okay, bastard. I had the uh, the other airbrush one that's not blowing water through it for six years, so that's lasted longer. But it's just like it feels like a shame because the compressor works, but it's a cake. It's like a cake airbrush. It's like for airbrushing pastries and shit. I don't need anything super heavy. I don't do. I just basically use it to airbrush gesso down. I don't really need an expensive. You know. All right, let's see here. My dog's hair. Mm -hmm. A little bit of the puppers in there. And all that. Wow, I spilled that gesso I poured. Yeah, there was a time when this would anger me and I'd be yelling and screaming, but. Definitely happens, and it's not a lack of testosterone thing, that's for certain. Just can you do? Mm -hmm. Flip this around. Throw that one away so I don't do that again. Build gesso all over this piece. Huh? Back. Now the gesso's tempting. Get rid of that. Ish. Alrighty. I hate putting away art supplies. In a half hour, wash it away. And one more stop. I thought I trimmed it down before I started, but I guess I did not. And I need to trim the top and bottom. I used to do sign and banner at Kinko's in like 2002, three ish. So, like, weeding vinyls, what they would call it, like, you know, kind of more costly pulleys. Vinyl away. Like, it's exactly the same thing. All right. That.
more here. Uh, it's always a pencil that is not sharpened. Always. I was in such a hurry to get this going, I forgot to do that. Forgot to trim the top and bottom. Scissors. I could do this like exacto and make it all perfect, but I just it's scissors. It's gonna get framed. It's gonna get framed. This close enough. Or right, folks, framing and cropping matters. Pull the camera back up. That's that, folks. So, this piece will be up on the eBay page up there at pisscoretribute.com. Takes you to my eBay page. It'll be up for about four more days. Four more days, and then um, and I'm gonna get that out. So we got we got two bids. You wanna get in on this? All the money again is gonna go to Ed Pisscore's family. They gotta go fund me. Um, you know, that's my way of chipping in. So you get a piece of art and you get to help out the Piscor family, right? So uh, the best we can do. The best we can do. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. I need to clean up my room and I need to go work on spawn kills every spawn. I will be doing an NDA podcast tomorrow. So uh, tomorrow or yeah, tomorrow? Tomorrow. I'll be doing an end cave, in, yeah, definitely tomorrow from 2 to 6 MDT. We hang out for about 3 or 4 hours. Um, and uh, I will see you all then. You all have a great day. Thank you for hanging out and chatting with me, keeping me company while I did this. Um, and uh, yeah, if you can't chip in, hey, you know, go to their GoFundMe and give them 5 bucks. You know what I mean? You don't have to spend money on this. Just help out any way you can. Rob, Rob would appreciate it. All right.